Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how you can manage your clips, add notes to them, and organize them by color by using markers and labels inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So markers are used when you want to timestamp either a position in your timeline or in the source video file clip. And then with that timestamp, you can give it a color and also add notes to it for further information. So if you're editing in your timeline or your main video project and you want to add a marker, you can go up to the timestamp area, hover over the point in which you want to add a marker, and then right click and go to add marker. So if you want to add a marker to a particular point at the timeline, you first have to take the timeline cursor and position it at the exact frame you want to add the note to. So if you want to add this to the start of a clip, then having snap in timeline or hitting S on your keyboard to toggle this on and off will be really handy because it'll allow you to get that precise point without putting too much effort into it. So if you want to add a marker to the timeline, then you need to position the timeline cursor at the exact frame that you're going to want the marker to appear. So for instance, if I want it here at this 10 second mark, then I can check up here and make sure all the numbers are good. And then you can either hit this add marker button, you can hit M on the keyboard, or you can right click and go down to add marker in the drop down menu in order to add your marker. So I'll just hit M on the keyboard for the shortcut. And what you should now see happen is that a marker appears at the top section of the timeline. Now you may have seen it appear on the clip itself. So if you want to add a marker to a clip that happens to be on the timeline, then you can select the clip first with the left click and hit M. And that instead adds the marker to the clip itself rather than the position in the timeline. This also includes all copies of the clip. So that includes the source files and any other copies of the same clip in the timeline. So if I drag the same clip out here, then you would see that same marker appears as well as if I add additional markers, they appear in all instances of that particular video clip. A couple reasons why you may want to add a marker to the timeline rather than to the clip itself. First off, if you remove the clip from your timeline, it's going to disappear. Technically, it's still on the clip and the source materials. But if you want to make sure that you don't lose this note, then it's better probably to add it to the timeline itself. In addition, if you move the clip along your timeline, because it's tied to the clip, it'll be at the position in the clip, but that might not be the same position in the timeline once you move it. So if you wanted to make sure, for instance, that this marker is always going to be at 10 seconds in the timeline, then it makes more sense to actually add it to the timeline itself. And once again, to do that, make sure you have nothing selected and you position your cursor and then hit M to add that marker. Now, you can see that by default that these markers have been green, but we can easily change the marker color and also to set a note by double clicking on any marker. So you can see here when we open up this window, we can name the marker. So if we double click on one of these markers, we'll get a pop up menu that gives us some settings. So at the top, we can give a marker a name. You also notice there's a section here for duration. So if you want a marker to actually span over a period of time rather than being a singular point in the timeline, then you can add a duration. So if you make it a one second duration, then the marker will start at this point and then go forward about a second into the future as well. You can also write comment notes here. So anything you might need to indicate to yourself or people you work with about what this marker means or what needs to be done at that particular point in the video, maybe a visual effect needs to be added and hasn't been added yet. You can write that in the comments for anyone to read. There's also a section down here called options where you can choose the type of marker which this is supposed to be. So these are just another way of categorizing the marker. But what you'll notice is that when we change it from comment to chapter marker, that it now defaults the marker color to red. So the default for a comment marker is green, for red it is a chapter marker, and a segmentation marker is a kind of a light violet. So how web link markers work is that if you export a video in a supported format like QuickTime, and the video reaches that point while playing on a web page, that you can have your video open up a URL automatically. So if we put in google.com here and the video was playing on a web page in QuickTime format, then uh, theoretically google.com would actually open for whoever was watching the video automatically. And there's also flash cue points, which I honestly don't know too much about, but those default to yellow. 
Of course, regardless of if you decide to change it to a different marker type, you can freely change the color. The main thing that's important is that if you have a differing marker color system, that it just makes sense for you. So if you decide to make all your comment markers white, that's fine as long as you can consistently apply that. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And you can see that the marker color for the one above the timeline at 10 seconds has changed. So since you can add markers to a video clip directly rather than the timeline itself, you can also add markers when you are previewing a source footage. So up here in the top left, you can see here source video one. It already has a marker because we added that one into the timeline, but we can just as easily actually add the marker there as well. So you can see this add marker button hitting M on the keyboard will also work as well the right click and add marker method. So when we add the marker on the video source, as long as that part of the clip shows up on the timeline, then on the timeline, it's also going to appear. So just like before, we can double click on it, change the color if we want. And I'll call it source marker added in source and hit OK. And now we can see that marker reflects the same information in the timeline. Also note, if you hover over a marker where you've set a title and a description, that you can actually see those just by hovering over it. You don't actually have to double click on it to see the information. So there's another way that you can choose to identify clips, and that's by labeling them. So if we look at the project section in the bottom left hand corner here, you'll notice that these two video clips here actually have separate label colors. So if you're in a list mode for the project window, then the first element here is actually the label for the video. However, if you're in an icon view, you won't be able to see that information, at least while it's in the project window. So where these labels become a little bit more useful is when they're actually on your timeline. So the reason that this video one is actually green, while the other ones are this kind of uh, light blue is because this video one is actually the timeline sequence. So if I double click on this, you'll actually see it pops open in the timeline. But if I double click on the MP4 file, it refers to the source window up here because that's just a source video file. So by default, your greens are going to be timeline sequences or the projects you're working on. And then the blues are just going to be your raw video clips. However, there's nothing to stop you from changing the colors of individual clips, timeline sequences, images, or any other items you happen to have in your project. So if you want to change the label on something, you can right click and go down to this label menu. And you'll see there's a decent chunk of colors that you can select from. So I can change this video clip to mango if I so choose. The color gets reflected over here on the left. And if I now add a copy of this clip to the timeline at any point, it's going to be a mango color instead of the light blue from before. Note that it doesn't update instances of your clips that are already on the timeline, but you can change these individually as well. So if I right click here and change the label of this old timeline clip, I can change that to a forest color if I want. Note that by changing it on the timeline, it only updates this clip. It doesn't change the source materials label and it doesn't affect any other copies of the same clip that are on your timeline. So one useful aspect about this is that if you decide that certain items should be grouped together, then you can actually select all of the items in that group at once by right clicking, going to label, and then doing select label group. So you'll see that when I do that, any other clips on the timeline that have that same label group are going to be selected. So if you needed to perform a group operation on all of the clips that match that labeling, um, then you can do that really easily without having to manually select every clip. Obviously as well, by having timeline clips labeled a certain way, it gives you an immediate visual indicator about, uh, about what that clip might be or what that clip might need if you develop your own system for how you want to organize everything. One more thing I should point out about markers is that you can jump between markers by right clicking on the timeline and going to go to next marker which will move your timeline cursor to the position of the next marker, whether that's in the timeline area up here or the clip sections down below. So let's go ahead and go to the next marker and you'll see it jumps to a timeline marker. If I go to next marker now, it jumps to the next clip marker. So if you organize your markers by giving each section of your timeline a chapter, or you just want to have notes for what needs to be done, then you can easily navigate to the next section that you need to work on and to help keep yourself a little bit more organized on big projects. So aside from that, the main difference is here to take away between markers and labels is that markers indicate position in a clip or the timeline 
and have notes attached to them. You can also give them a name. Whereas labels are taking a clip, a source file, or a source sequence, a timeline sequence, and to assign a color to it for your own indications, you can't add notes to labels. But the thing about labels is that they expand across an entire clip. So if you need to indicate a specific point or a few seconds of your timeline or video clip, you generally use markers, but if you want to assign a color to an entire clip, then you use labels instead. So that's pretty much it for using markers and labels inside of Adobe Premiere. I hope that this video has helped you guys out a bit. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you in my future video content.